The deadlift is the king of all exercises, and it's one of the only exercises where more isn't always better. For novice lifters, even one working set can be enough for the whole week because it's so taxing on the body. This video is about the conventional deadlift, not the sumo, <coughs> cheating, not straight leg, and not Romanian. The deadlift is the act of picking something up off the ground in the most efficient way possible. I lift things up and put them down. Excuse me? It's also the strongest movement pattern in the entire human repertoire, as it recruits the most amount of muscle. Muscles used include the entire posterior chain, back, hamstring, and glutes, quads, core, shoulders, and forearms, each pushed to their limits in order to complete the exercise. The barbell deadlift affords you the ability to build the most amount of total body strength with minimal equipment and can be incrementally loaded till infinity. It's also got the greatest carryover to real life activities like carrying, lifting, and even cardio. Let's dig in. If, when arriving at the gym, your low back, hamstrings, and hips are feeling dysfunctional or otherwise extremely tight, feel free to spend five to 10 minutes working on these areas with Cossacks, inchworms, foam rolling the lats, or doing some targeted release work on the lacrosse ball. If on the other hand you are not particularly broken in any way, skip this type of warm up because it will be a waste of time. You're better off performing a progressive warm up on the exercise that you're actually going to do. For the deadlift, that usually means starting off with the bar at 95 pounds or 135. Working our way up incrementally in sets of five to one until we reach our working weight. The correct deadlift bar will have a little more whip to it to allow it to bend a little so you can take the slack out of the bar before you pull, which gives better bar speed off the floor. The bar itself tends to be slightly narrower in diameter with sharper knurling to give you better grip. Grabbing a thick bar to work on your grip strength is counterproductive. It would be like deadlifting using those dumb fat grip attachments, taking your 450 deadlift to a 300 pound deadlift. And for what? So you can turn a full body exercise into a forearm exercise? Dumb. First and foremost here, let's talk about shoes. Find a shoe with a stable, thin, flat sole. Cushy running shoes? Too unstable. Weightlifting shoes? Too elevated at the heel, making the pull longer than it has to be. Flip-flops? Chucks? Indoor soccer shoes? Going barefoot or Vibram's five fingers? This is a good option as long as your ankles and foot arch aren't messed up. Long soccer socks? Well, they protect your shins from bleeding and make you look cool. Highly recommended. Straps, chalk, and belt. Great, but not for novices. You wanna be building up your grip and core strength naturally first before you use these. Don't even think about touching these accessories until you've reached intermediate stage. Lifting gloves. Unless you are a professional hand modeler, absolutely not. Calluses are trained just like muscles. Put in the work. Whatever your starting weight, you need to use plates tall enough to place the bar at eight and three quarter inches off the ground. Any regular 45 pound plate will be at this height. No matter how strong you are, deadlifts start at 135 pounds, which is roughly equivalent to zero pounds. Anything less is like running a 5K. It doesn't count, and neither do you. If you aren't strong enough to start at 135, and you train at a big box gym with no bumper plates, you'll have to get creative. Pulling 10 or 25 pound plates off the ground is no way to train your deadlift, and requires way too much range of motion for most people. For those of you with atrocious mobility in the hips and low back, even this height may not be enough. A combination of modified block pulls and Romanian deadlifts will help to both quiet the lower back and improve hamstring flexibility. Finally, if you have the misfortune of having a long torso, deadlifting will always suck for you, and you may need to start higher off the ground. Fun fact, the height of the bar relative to the plates was originally designed to protect the lifter's skull from being crushed during a missed Olympic lift. Stand hip width apart with toes pointed straight forward or out slightly, not shoulder width. A wide stance can cause your knees to cave inward and increase the length of the pull unnecessarily. Approach the bar so that it is directly over your mid foot. Your shin should be one to two inches away from the bar depending on foot length. Grab the bar just outside of your knees and bend the shins so they touch the bar. Do not bring the bar to your shins, bring your shins to the bar. Grab the bar in an overhand grip, not underhand, not alternating. 
You don't want to mess up your shoulders. Take a big deep breath in to create intra-abdominal pressure and hold it throughout the entire lift. Screw your feet out into the ground, driving your knees into your elbows and engage your glutes. Take the slack out of the bar by pushing your chest out and packing your shoulders down and back. This will straighten your back and prevent injury. Keep your hips high, do not turn this into a squat. Pull. When standing up, both your knees and hips should open up and lock out at the same time. Keep a neutral spine, do not round the back at all. Do not hitch the bar. Hitching occurs when you start the deadlift with a rounded back. And when the bar passes your knees, you end up resting the bar on your thighs and trying to uncurl a curled spine and attempting to bounce the bar up to finish the lift instead of letting your hips and hamstrings take care of the lift with a straight back. This is not a deadlift and it is illegal in competition. Do not crank your neck up. Don't let your hips pop up first. This will bring you back pain and it means you're not properly activating your posterior chain. To correct, start with your hips high enough so they don't have to move when pulling. If your deadlift involves a shrug at the top, you haven't properly set your shoulders back and down. Drop the bar reasonably fast. Going slow with heavy weight will destroy your lower back. Lower the bar the same way it came up, making sure to bend at the hips first, then the knees. A common error is to bend the knees first, forcing the bar to travel around your knees unnecessarily. Pause between reps. Do not bounce the bar back up. This risks tearing a bicep or messing up your elbow. It's called the deadlift for a reason. Each repetition is performed from a dead stop. One final note about rounding the back. This rule is not hard and fast. For advanced and intermediate lifters, working above 90% of maximal strength, targeted rounding of the mid and upper back actually puts you in a stronger position. I can start rounded. To stay injury free, allow only very slight flexion in the low back and maintain whatever spinal position is chosen throughout the lift. Do not make a habit of turning your back into a fishing pole. You'll end up looking like Quasimodo with giant erectors and a permanently rounded back. But let me re-emphasize, this is for advanced and intermediate lifters in maximal effort scenarios only. If you are a novice, do not round the back. By now you're probably thinking, okay cool, but how do I put all this together to achieve a respectable deadlift? Well the first answer is hire me as your strength coach, but here's a few tips that should get you started. If you are heavy squatting and deadlifting on the same day, start with a squat and finish with a deadlift. Otherwise, start your day with a deadlift. If time is a factor and you want to cram lots of exercises into your session, superset your deadlift with something light, like calf raises, face pulls, or lateral raises. For the majority of lifters, perform one to three sets of five reps at working weight, usually leaving room for one or two in the tank every time, and adding five to 10 pounds every week or every session, depending on where you are in your lifting progression. And finally, don't deadlift more than two or three times a week. If you're working at an appropriately heavy load, you're not gonna be able to recover fast enough because the deadlift is so taxing on the body. Like and subscribe, you bums.